Hey everyone, this is Alex from warnoffkeys.com. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create your own message collectors and reaction collectors within Discord.js version 13. Now real quick, I wanna mention that knowing JavaScript is required to follow this video and this entire series. If you don't know JavaScript, don't worry. You can scroll down to the description of this video and at the top, you'll see JavaScript course. There was an hour long crash course here on YouTube, which you can right click and open this in a new tab. So you can watch that after you're done with this video. So to start off, here I have my basic project and I'll be using Warnoff Keys commands as my command handler. Technically, you can use any command handler you want. The concepts will still be the same. And one thing we need to do before we get started writing our code is we need to add in our own intents to be able to receive information about reactions. So because I'm using TypeScript, I can easily say intents dot flags dot guild message reactions. And now our bot will receive information about different reactions. So I can go ahead and close this and I'm going to create a new command called collector dot TS. And of course, if you're using JavaScript, you use JS instead. So here we want to export an object that is going to represent our actual command within TypeScript. That would be export default object and within JavaScript. That would be module dot exports equals an object. So I'm using TypeScript. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with that syntax. And because I'm using TypeScript, I can now say that this is a certain type of object with as I command, which is a part of one of keys commands. And essentially this allows me to get more autocomplete here and we can see all possible options this command can have. Now a category and a description are acquired. So I'll just set these to testing. And of course you can add in whatever information you want. And then afterwards we can add in our own callback, which will be ran whenever a user actually runs our command. This will be a function here. And within the parameters, there'll be an object which we can destructure some properties from in this case, we'll have access to a message. And because reaction collectors and message collectors are very similar, we'll be creating both of them within this single command, but we'll start with message collectors and then I'll modify it afterwards to work with reaction collectors. So the first thing I want to do is I want to prompt them to enter some type of information. So I could say message dot reply. We could then say, enter your username. And then here we now want to gain access to our own message collector. To do this, we need access to the channel, which we could access with message.channel. However, because I'm using one-off keys commands, we have immediate access to the channel within the properties right here. So now I can say const collector equals channel dot create message collector. Now within here, we can pass in an object. And if I use control space, we'll see a number of different options. Some of which that we're interested in will be filter, max, and time. Time will be the amount of milliseconds until the collector ignores all further requests. Max will be the maximum number of messages or reactions to collect. And then filter will be a method that will ensure that only the right people are being collected. So for example, if we're having a yes or no with a thumbs up or thumbs down reaction, we only want to listen for reactions sent by the message sender. So we're actually gonna start with that filter method. So I could say const filter equals a method here. And for now, I'm just going to return true. And essentially this Boolean that is returned will be if that reaction or that message is collected. So because we're using messages, we're going to gain access to a message here. And because I'm using TypeScript, I could specify this as a message type. Now I'm naming this M, which is typically not a good idea because it's not descriptive at all, but I want to make sure that this argument right here is obviously different from our actual message right here. And we're only using it in this one case. So it's not really a big deal. So here we could return M dot author dot ID is exactly equal to message dot author dot ID. So basically if this command is ran in a public channel, this filter method will filter through all messages and ensure we're only collecting messages from the person who actually sent this command. So now that we have this, we can pass it in here and we also can pass in the max number of words or messages we want to collect. In this case, I can say max is two. And then we can set a timeout where the collector will just stop working after a certain amount of time. So I can say time is 20,000, or I can do 1000 times 20. This way we can easily replace this 20 with a variable in the future, or just easily change it to something else. So as soon as we run this code, the collector will automatically start working. And there are two important events that we want to listen to. The first of which is the collect event. So I can say collector dot on. And here we have the collect event, which will give us access to a message in this case. And for now, I'm just going to simply console log message dot content. And the next event we want to listen to will be the end event. So I can say collector dot on end. 
And then we'll have access to collected, which will be a map of all the collected messages in this case. And I want to first start off by checking to make sure they actually collected something. So I could say if collected.size is exactly equal to zero, we want to return, and then we want to complain to the user by replying to their original command message. So here I could say message.reply. You did not provide your username. And I'm using username here because that's what we're telling them to enter right here. And actually with that said, I'm actually going to change max back to one. Of course, you could add in that you want to collect five messages or 10, but in this case, we're asking for a specific username. So I'll say one. And just so we're not waiting 20 seconds, I'm going to change this to five seconds. But of course, you can change either of these values to whatever works for your use case. So now after this if statement, we know that something was indeed collected because otherwise we would have returned here. So now I'm looking to tell the user everything that they reacted with or every message that they sent. So I could say let text equals collected colon and then two new lines with forward slash n. This will essentially just create a new line within the response. And here we could say collected dot for each. And here we'll gain access to a callback function that we ran for each individual element that we collected. So here we'll have access to a message. Then I can say text plus equal to a template literal message dot content forward slash n to create another new line. And then I can say message dot reply with text. So here we're basically just adding all the collected messages into a string and then letting the user know what was said. So now if I save this and I open up my terminal by going to terminal, new terminal, I can then navigate into my proper folder. And I can run this with npm run dev. If you have a different script to run yours, feel free to use that one instead. And because our command is called collector, I can go back into the discord and I can do exclamation point collector. It'll then say enter your username. I can say Alex. It'll then say collected. And then here we have Alex. And this happened immediately after I sent one message because we have a max of one. Now we have a max timeout of five seconds. So let's go ahead and try this command again by saying collector. And I'm just going to wait five seconds. And afterwards, it should say that I didn't type anything in. As we see right here, you did not provide your username. Now, of course, all these messages can be customized to whatever you want. And one more thing I want to show you is that here we see Alex on the console. That's because of this right here. Every time I type anything in that it gets collected, it will automatically be console logged here. And so you can listen for each individual message right here. Now, I'm going to minimize my console here. And I'm going to change this into a reaction collector, which is very similar. So this filter method actually needs to be changed because there are going to be two individual parameters passed in. So I'm going to highlight this and use control forward slash or command forward slash on a Mac. That way, if you download the source code, you still have access to this. And then I can say const filter equals another method. We can return true. And this will have two different parameters. The first one will be a reaction. So I can say reaction type of message reaction. Then we're going to have a user, which will be the type of a user. And this is the person who actually clicked on the reaction. So here we want to return user.id is exactly equal to message.author.id. And here we're getting an error because this is not going to expect there to be a reaction here because we're still using create message collector. So with that said, I'm actually going to copy this and paste it right up here. And I'm going to comment this out with the actual message filter here. So this is everything to do with the message collectors. And then here, instead of channel.create message collector, we're looking to say message.create reaction collector. So now everything else should work. The filter is passed in from here. The max is still fine, and so is the time. But our collect is throwing this error here because there is no content property on the reaction. So if I click on message here and press F2, I can now rename this, and I'm going to call this reaction. We can now console log reaction.emoji. And then under here, instead of saying you did not provide a username, we can say you did not react in time. And in fact, we are going to go up and we're going to change this to say, please confirm this action. So here I'm going to automatically have the bot add in its own reaction. So the user can simply just click on an existing reaction. So I can say message.react. And then here on Windows, I can use the Windows key and colon to open up this. And I can then type in a thumb. And here we have the thumbs up emoji. So scrolling back down, we now see one more error here because we're trying to access content. So instead, I'm going to say emoji.name. And if I save this, we see my bot is automatically restarting. I can then go into Discord and I can do exclamation point collector. It'll then give me a thumbs up right here. If I click on this, 
it'll then say it collected it right here. And of course, if anyone were to react with this, aside from me, it wouldn't actually matter. Same concept for if anyone typed anything here that wasn't me, in case this was in a public channel. That's because our filter functions here are ensuring that we're only listening for the messages or the reactions from that specific user. So you, then you have access to the individual emojis. We see we have a bunch of information here about the emoji and the guild. And then after all the emojis are collected, you then have access to all of them here, where you can add in your own logic for your own use case. Thanks for watching the video. If you want access to video source code, as well as early access to future tutorials, consider clicking on the join button down below the video to support the channel.